Um, my story is not, I am not the patient. I was the pa I am the patient's mother. I am the, pa it's my son's story. But as his mother, and as we have parents here in the audience, you know that your child's story is also your story. This disease does not just affect the child, the patient. It affects the family, it affects the parents, it affects the siblings. Because it is so debilitating that it affects the entire relationship and ability of the family to maneuver through life. Um, my son's story started in October of 2006 when he was eight years old when he had his first diagnosed episode of pancreatitis. At that time, Cameron was experiencing flu-like symptoms for several days, almost a week. He was having nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. I thought he was having the flu. His symptoms started getting worse. I walked into the, he was telling me he was so nauseated, he started throwing up. I walked into the bathroom. And for those of you who have pancreatitis, you know, it was not food, it was not gall, it was black. At that time, I knew we needed to do something. Excuse me if I get a little bit emotional because when it's your child, you want to be able to take care of him and do everything you can for him. Um, at that time, October 2006, for those of you who are in New Orleans, you know we were 10 months after Katrina. So medical services were very limited. Um, I took him to an urgent care on the North Shore near my home. The physician there said, oh my gosh, it looks like he's got appendicitis. You need to get him to Children's Hospital because that's what, that was the only facility that had a pediatric surgeon. There were no pediatric surgeons on the North Shore at that time. So um, after hydrating him at the urgent care, in fact, what we had to do, we had to call EMS. The urgent care facility didn't have IVs. So we had to call an EMS to come to the urgent care center, put an IV in him, get him hydrated, and while he was still hooked up to the IV, took him to Children's Hospital. Uh, when we got to Children's Hospital in New Orleans, uh, diagnostic tests were run in, on him in the emergency room. The pediatric surgeon came in, he was a wonderful man, I remember his name, Dr. Valerie. And he told us that Cameron did not have appendicitis, but that he had abnormal fluids in the abdomen area. You can imagine tr trying to put your head around this. What eight-year-old has abnormal fluid in the ab abdominal area? You just, it was just unexplainable. Uh, but uh, a pediatric GI was called in, a wonderful man, Dr. Schmidt Summerfield. And I mention his name because he was a godsend to us. Um, he told us that Cameron had pancreatitis and after ruling out trauma and ruling out medicine related pancreatitis, he thought Karen had a case of idiopathic acute pancreatitis. Uh, we were in the hospital for about a week at that time. Cameron was NPO on IV fluids for two or three days. I had my pediatrician calling me, telling me, oh my gosh, Jane, you're gonna be in the hospital for six weeks with Cameron. Well, thank goodness we weren't. We, he was in a week and then he was uh, like discharged. But about six weeks later, Cameron had another pancreatic episode. Um, this time, his, to give y'all an idea, for those of you who do chart these things, because I do chart them, I'm going to show you what a mom does. Mom has a list of all of the hospitalizations and everything. But at that time, his life pace was 4,000. His amylase was 1,900. 
So um, they treated him in the same manner we treated him before, NPO, IV fluids for several days until he could stand the food and was without pain. But luckily, Dr. Smith Summerfield said, something else is going on here. Now, t mind you, this was back in 2007, okay? And that's why I'm pointing this out, because this man was a forerunner. He said, you know, let's do some genetic testing. Let's see what's going on. Well, sure enough, Cameron was um, tested, and he found that he had two spink, muta spink 1 mutations. Not just one, but two spink 1 mut mutations. So um, after the, he was tested, we, he con consulted, uh, well, let me go back and say this. Um, for those of you who don't know what I do, I'm an attorney. I'm a research attorney. So after Cameron was diagnosed and the spink 1 mutations were found, I did my job. I researched, I went on the internet. I, at that time, found the National Pancreas Foundation. At that, I read the medical journals that were listed on the, on the website. I went to the medical journals themselves, pulled them, read the articles, found Dr. Whitcomb and Dr. Mark Lowe at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And contacted Dr. Lowe who was a pediatric GI. Uh, he agreed to consult and see Cameron. So we flew up to Pittsburgh in April of 2007. It snowed, <laughs> uh, which was really fun for a Southern girl to deal with snow in April. But after consulting with Dr. Lowe, he gave us some very sound advice on how to treat Cameron's condition. He also agreed to become a consultant to the physicians at Children's Hospital. Uh, so that whenever Cameron was hospitalized or had needed additional testing, they would consult with him to see what was appropriate and what was really needed. Because um, unfortunately, while Cameron was hospitalized in November of 2007 at Children's, Dr. Schmidt Summerfield was also hospitalized and passed away. Um, unexpectedly. So our forerunner was gone. Uh, Cameron continued to have minor flares from 2006 to 2007. Um, and at that, it, they would mainly be abdominal and back pain. Sometimes he would experience nausea. Uh, he didn't have the diarrhea. He had constipation, severe, severe constipation. Um, but in February of 2008, the severity of the attacks increased. From February of 2008 through October of 2008, he was hospitalized five times for a week at each time. Um, to give you parents an idea, on his hospitalization on October 23rd of 2008, his lipase pace was 27,000. His amylase was 4,000. Finally, a CAT scan was done.